Hi YouTube, in this short tutorial I'm going to show you an easy way to add a fire simulation to an animated mesh in Blender. To demonstrate I'm going to use the horns on my Minotaur character. In this video I'll have mostly just basic steps, but in the future I plan to have a video showing what all of the different settings for fire simulations mean and how you can use them to get different effects. Now with my character selected, I enter edit mode and select just the horns. And then I hit shift D to duplicate them and then right click and separate by selection. What this does is creates a separate object of um, a copy of the horns. And that is what I will use to simulate the fire. Doing it this way is super helpful because the horns will still have their association to the rig, meaning that we can animate them um, as if they were still attached. So to start the simulation, select the horns, go to object and quick effects, and then quick smoke. And you can see it already put a little um, smoky looking effect on the screen. The box that it creates is the domain, which is the area that the simulation can exist inside of. And you can see I've started to add some color to it. Now there's a lot of settings in here, and I don't even know what they all do yet. I'm going to study it a lot and make a guide for you guys so that um, you don't have to go through and learn them all on your own, but it's super helpful just to try them and see what they do. So we'll get into the specifics of the settings later. To add materials to the fire, click on the domain and go to the shading tab. And the domain will pull up a principled volume shader. And this is what I use to uh, change the density and the color of the smoke and the fire. So every time you change your simulation to uh, save it or to run the simulation, you have to bake it. And to do that, you just select a location, and normally it's where your files are, to save the bake file. And then uh, you can run the simulation. And as you can see, I can kind of play it back in the viewport to see what it looks like. So now that we've got an idea of what it'll look like, I'm adding the animation to the character. And it's pretty simple, just having him look past the camera and then focusing back on the camera. And this should demonstrate that the mesh is what is emitting the fire, and so the fire follows the mesh. So then I added a few more extra small details like blinking and having his ears move just for a little bit more interest. Here's a preview of what the fire looks like. It already looks pretty cool, but I wanted to start setting up the scene to decide if I like the colors or not. And I ended up going with the blue color, but you can see how you can kind of tune and change the color of the smoke and what part is smoke and what part is fire. And again, I'll have a lot more detail on all of this type of stuff later in a, in a guide that explains the settings. But now I've got an idea of what the fire will look like, and I've got the animation done. So again, every time I change, I have to bake the animation. Here I've added a cube for volumetrics. I give it a volume shader just to make the foggy effect that you saw. So now I make the last tweaks to the simulation and increase the resolution and then bake it. The last step will be rendering. Keep in mind when you're simulating, you want to keep the resolution low until you know what it'll look like and then increase it for the final one because it will take a lot of time. Here are the final renders. Thank you for watching and watch for more soon where I'll go in more detail.